Hi guys, this is the story of my abusive mother-in-law and my useless husband, who didn't even bother to protect me. I'll be using fake names in my story since I don't want to be identified. Sharing my story is one thing, but handling real-life drama is another, so I don't want anyone to find me. Let's say my name is Peyton. Grant is my husband and Joanne is my mother-in-law. There's also my grandma Lily, who is the sole reason why I'm still alive today. Let me tell you from the beginning. Grant was more or less a good boyfriend to me. I was completely in love with him and ready to marry him. So when he proposed to me, I immediately said yes. But my life completely changed after that. Grant suddenly started to show lots of red flags. I discovered that he and his mother are extremely close and his mother essentially controlled him. It was Joanne who first started to create problems. She was living with us and mooching off her son. One day she just walked in with some papers and said, Peyton, you need to come and sign these papers. The faster you do it is better for you. What are those papers, Joanne? This is an ironclad prenup that you both need to sign. It says that in case of a divorce, none of you can claim anything from each other. Sign it right now. Wait a minute, did you just make a prenup without consulting us? This is really humiliating, Joanne. Why would you do that? I did this so you can't take my son to the cleaners in case of a divorce. You earn way less than him and this house is his. We cannot trust you enough to try and take everything from him. This is insane. Joanne, I am not some witch that you make me out to be. This is ridiculous. I won't sign a prenup just like that. I feel insulted. You should have talked to us about this. Uh, actually, I know about the prenup. It's not a big deal, Peyton. If you are really not with me for money, you should have no problem signing this. I was pretty taken aback at the fact that Joanne and Grant had a discussion, but didn't even tell me. No, I was not with Grant for money. I didn't earn much, but... I had had a big inheritance in store for me. I didn't tell Grant that yet. Grant and I fought for days, and Joanne re regularly verbally insulted me for not signing the papers. After a while, I went to my grandma for help. She listened to everything I said, and said, oh, Honey, are you sure you want to marry this man? I don't think he's the right one for you. You two aren't even married yet, and he's already making plans with his mother to corner you. It's just this one problem, Grandma. I really love Grant, and he loves me too. I really can't imagine marrying someone else. He is a good man. Well, if you really already made that decision, I would actually encourage you to sign the prenup. I'll send my lawyer to read through the terms, but I have a request to make. You should never mention that your grandparents are millionaires. I don't want them to know. I haven't told them anything yet, Grandma, but why don't you want me to say it? I understand things better than you, Peyton. You're seeing them with rose-tinted glasses. Your grandfather and I worked hard to build this fortune. I don't want anyone to take advantage of you and steal your money. Grandma, you don't have to worry about that. I won't tell them anything since you asked me not to. Besides... Grant is a good man, and he will never do that. If his mother becomes too much, I'm sure he'll protect his wife. I was wrong, you know. Grant was a horrible man, and his mother was much worse than I knew. I gave in, and signed the prenup, and later realized what a wise decision it was. As soon as we got married, Joanne started to abuse me regularly. Even after signing the prenup, she verbally and sometimes physically abused me. I'm too ashamed to speak of the things she did, but I will mention one incident. This incident is important because it was the turning point of my marriage. One day when I was home after work, Joanne came storming into my room with a smirk on her face. She handed me a big bag of clothes and demanded that I wash them. I didn't protest because I was used to this behaviour. I knew that if I refused to do it, she would tell Grant and then the two would verbally abuse me. It was a routine. So, I picked up the heavy bag even though it was hard for me. While I was going down the hall, Joanne tripped me and I fell. 
I hurt my ankle and screamed out in pain. Joanne laughed at me and left. After putting an ice pack on my ankle, I called Grant. Grant, I fell down and hurt my ankle. Your mother tripped me today. I have taken her abuse for a long time now. You need to do something. She's crossed her limits. Don't make up lies about Mum, Peyton. She would never do something like that. You just want her out of the house and don't want to do chores. Stop lying and defaming my mum. I'm not lying, Grant. Please believe me. Don't waste my time, Peyton. Go back and do the chores my mum gave you. I don't want another complaint out of your mouth. Grant simply hung up on me. He never stood up for me and always acted like I was in the wrong. I didn't say anything because I didn't want him to leave, but this time I couldn't take it anymore. I just cracked. Actually, I was secretly seeing a therapist with the help of my grandma. So their abusive ways were becoming too much to handle. It was at this point that I knew I had to get out. What pissed me off even more was that Joanne sent me some nasty texts saying how I deserved what she did and Grant would never speak against her. I was freaking mad. I made up my mind that I needed revenge. The opportunity showed up well later. My grandma passed away. I was sad but relieved because she was in a lot of pain. I couldn't stand to see her in so much pain. I stayed strong thinking that she had finally reunited with my granddad and was now free from pain. Grant didn't even help me even a little when my grandma passed away. He didn't even show up to the funeral or anything. But he got to know that I received $250 million as an inheritance. Yes, they were that rich. Grant absolutely lost his shit with shock. He was being extra nice to me when we went home. The next day, another surprise awaited me. Joanne was at the foot of my bed looking very sweetly at me. I was surprised to find her in my room looking creepily at me. I honestly didn't know what to think of it. In my mind, I could see this coming. Still watching my abusive mother-in-law change her face was starting to creep me out. I said, What are you doing here, Joanne? No one told me you were coming today. Hell, why were you staring at me in my sleep? Oh, I came early so that I can help you with the chores. I made you tea and it's right beside the bed. I know how much you love tea, so I ordered a special batch for you. You didn't answer why you were sitting in my room when I was sleeping? Honestly, Joanne, it is creepy as hell. I was trying to massage your feet, Peyton. I know you hurt your feet while carrying my laundry that day. Your feet must be so sore, so I thought maybe I could massage it for you. You literally tripped me that day, Joanne. How dare you show up and try to massage my feet? Don't you have any shame? Now, now, you don't have to be so dramatic about that one. It was an honest mistake. I didn't know you would fall or that the load was so heavy. I already massaged your foot and made up for it, didn't I? You think massaging my foot will make up for the way that you have abused me? You are insane, Joanne. Get out of my room. I don't want to see your face right now. All right, I'll be in the kitchen making you breakfast. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I will take care of it. I will also make sure Grant has everything ready as well. You take your time and freshen up. Joanne said that sweetly and left with a skip in her step. Her shift in attitude was making my head spin, even when I was lying down. I felt like she breached my privacy and was acting like a lunatic. Money can really make people do things, you know. Joanne is solid proof of it. Grant must have told her to avoid my inheritance, which prompted her to make this visit a change of heart. But neither Grant nor Joanne knew that none of them would get their hands on my fortune. I had made sure of that. I got out of bed and got dressed in my best set of clothes. It was my day of revenge and I wanted to look my best. My therapy was working very well and I finally had the confidence to stand up for myself. I went down to the kitchen with my bag in tow. It had some important documents that I needed to send out today. I guess you can tell what I was about to do. I found Grant with Duran in the kitchen. They both looked very happy and were whispering something to each other. When they saw me, 
Their smiles just became two times wider. Grant drew the chair out for me while Duran set about fixing me a plate. I said, Why did you make breakfast today? I would have done it by myself. You didn't have to trouble yourself with it. Grant hates it when you do something in this house. What nonsense. I'm happy to do this for you, Peyton. It's not a big deal. Yes, it's just breakfast. <laughs> My mum can do this for you. You don't have to worry about any kind of work from now on. Once we sell the house and buy a mansion, I'll look for a housekeeper. Till then, my mother can look after all the chores. I'll help her out too. You think buying my medicines is a waste of money, but suddenly hiring a housekeeper is cheap for you? Also, how do you plan to buy a mansion? Been robbing a bank recently? Don't be ridiculous. We have plenty of money to do everything now. You just got a huge inheritance from your grandmother. Yes, Grant is right. Finally, we are millionaires now. We don't have to worry about money anymore. Your inheritance would be enough to last us a lifetime. We can do whatever we want now. Yeah, I've been thinking about quitting my job. I was getting burnt out in this place anyway. Maybe we can take a vacation and have some fun. What do you say? I started to laugh very loudly at what they said. I couldn't believe my ears. It has been like one day since I received my inheritance and these two have already started to make plans. They really think that I will just hand them over the money and let them do what they want? One day of fake good behaviour was supposed to wash away years of abuse that I suffered at the hands of my husband and mother-in-law? Joanne and Grant looked a little uncomfortable with my laughter and were trying to look away. Their own plans may have sounded just ridiculous to them too since they held on to the hope that I would magically forgive them. After laughing for a few seconds, I said, My God, <laughs> it's been like one day since I got my inheritance. Look how drastically you have changed your tunes. Money does make a difference, doesn't it? Let's not remember the old days now. We had no idea you had such good luck coming your way. We would have treated you better if we knew. Yeah, you shouldn't be hiding things from your husband and in-laws, Peyton. That was very sneaky of you anyway. What should we do with so much money? I was thinking of a house and a Caribbean vacation. Don't just say house, Grant. Say mansion or villa. We can even opt for a penthouse. That would suit our status better. We are millionaires after all. All my friends would be so jealous of me. I listened to their banter and then casually took out the documents that I was hiding in my folder. Joanne and Grant looked expectantly at me, as if I was giving them papers saying all the money was theirs now. But they would be in for a shock. I held the papers in hand and said, I would like to correct you there, guys. We are not millionaires. I am a millionaire now. The money is mine, and I got it as my inheritance. Yes, you did get the money, but we share everything. We are married after all, so you should be sharing your money with me. Yes, yes, and as your mother-in-law and only surviving family right now, you should share the money with me as well. We are family after all. You are my daughter as much as Grant is my son. It's ironic how I have suddenly become your daughter, Joran. Till about yesterday, I was just a witch your son married. Anyway, you shouldn't get so carried away. We won't be family anymore. Not that we were ever family anyway. What do you mean, Peyton? I'm your mother-in-law, so I am family. How would you be my mother-in-law when I won't be married to your son anymore? If Grant loses his husband's title, you'll be less than nothing to me. What is the meaning of this, Peyton? Why won't I be your husband anymore? What is going on? Well, I have filed for divorce. I did it the day after my grandma died. I won't be staying with you anymore, Grant. You're a terrible husband and don't deserve to be one. Saying that, I threw the divorce papers on the table. Grant and Joran both read the papers to check if I was speaking the truth. When they read through the documents, their eyes shot up to the sky. They looked at the papers in disbelief and then gave each other worried glances. I guess they didn't think I would be capable of filing for divorce. They said, What is this, Peyton? Why have you filed for divorce? This doesn't make any sense. You think I'm weak enough to be stuck in an abusive marriage for the rest of my life? Why are you surprised, Grant? I had told you this was coming. I told you the very day Joanne tripped me. Oh my God, why are you still stuck in the past? I have apologised for it. Plus, it has happened already and I can't change that. You need to be a little forgiving. This 
is not a big enough problem to warrant a divorce. Mom has already made amends for that. So you, Duran, confess to tripping me and all you do is tell me to get over it. Well, get this into your head, guys. I am divorcing you and you won't get a cent of my inheritance. I can't believe I fell in love with such a vile man like you, Grant. I'm ashamed I tried my best to impress a monster like you, Joanne. But this abuse ends now. We are definitely getting a divorce and we can do this the simple way or the difficult way. Suddenly, Grant and Joanne looked very pissed at me. I guess they didn't like the fact that I called them out on their behaviour. They knew that since I filed for divorce already, I was dead serious. It wasn't a threat to make them do what I wanted. They were now willing to follow my wishes anyway, since I had lots of money, they said. What's the use of divorcing me, Peyton? You have more money than me because your inheritance is our marital asset. I will get half of it anyway. You might have half, but most of it will be spent on the lawyer. God, did you forget about the prenup that you and your mother forcefully made me sign? I'm sure my dear mother-in-law can remind you of it. She was adamant we sign a prenup. It suddenly dawned on them that they had screwed themselves over. Back then they had no idea that I would somehow become a millionaire. They wanted to protect themselves because they knew no sane woman would stay with them after their abuse. The prenup was a way for them to abuse people and not have any consequences for it. But this time they just played themselves. They dug their own graves. They said, uh, The prenup was a long time ago. I'll talk to a lawyer and find out what we can do. We won't let you walk away with all that money. Yeah, you are doing this to threaten us. You can't do anything to us, Peyton. We will take your money and do what we please with it. So, I take it that you will try and fight me in court. Oh, don't worry, Peyton. We will make this hard for you. You can't just decide on your own. I'll fight you in court. You can't get divorced without my signature. Remember that? Really, Grant? So, you will intentionally make the process difficult for me, Grant? Well, that's not an issue. I'm prepared for everything. I have some ammo of my own. What do you mean, Peyton? Joanne, remember how you confessed to tripping me and abusing me on texts? Well, I will use them to file a report to the cops. That'll be a fun event, won't it? No, 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 you won't dare do that. You won't do that to me. That is impossible. I'll delete all the texts. Don't worry, Joanne. I have all the texts saved and sent to some of my friends. Trust me. I'm perfectly capable of reporting you to the police. In fact, I can also show how Grant knew and didn't do anything to save me. It will be a downhill battle for you in divorce court. Joanne and Grant immediately started to hound me with apologies. They forgot the fact that I had the power to put Joanne in jail. They thought I had let go of the incident, but I was just biding my time and using this for the right moments. Joanne and Grant were in deep trouble. They were unsure of what to do. I took the divorce papers with me and left the house. I would collect my things the next day. Grant and Joanne tried to stop me and said, Don't walk away from us, Peyton. Let's sit and have a conversation about it. We can deal with the situation like adults and not make any rash decisions. Yeah, you have to stay here anyway. Where will you go anyway? Let's talk about it. I'm moving into my grandmother's house. It has already been transferred to my name. I will be living there and waiting for Grant to decide on the divorce. I'm taking the papers with me so that you can't damage them and make me file again. As for my things, I've taken pictures of everything. Don't even think about damaging or getting rid of anything. Grant and Joanne went on trying to stop me. But I had already called a friend who was waiting for me outside. I got into her car and drove off with her. Grant and Joanne stood at the door and stared at us the whole time. After going to my new place, I contacted a moving company and booked them to bring my things from the house. In the months that followed, Grant and Joanne did their best to try and change my mind. I kept reminding them about going to the cops because Grant didn't sign the divorce papers. Grant did talk to a lawyer who told him in no uncertain terms that the prenup was solid and he had no way out. After being threatened by me multiple times, Grant was forced to sign the divorce papers he didn't want his mum in jail after all plus he knew I would never give him a chance again Grant and Joanne are currently not talking to each other wondering why well Grant 
did not take the divorce very well and started to blame Joanne for causing problems between us. Grant was sure that Joanne was the reason he missed out on being a millionaire. After having countless fights with her, he ended up kicking her out with nothing. Since Joanne lived off Grant's money, she was left homeless and without funds. Last I heard, Joanne was in a homeless woman's shelter with no idea what to do with herself. I did the course of informing everyone what horrible people Joanne and Grant are, so they have been isolated from people. No one really talks to them. As for me, I'm enjoying my new life and casually watching the aftermath. I still stay at my grandma's place since it holds sentimental value to me. From my inheritance, I have donated some money to women's help centres and plan on doing more for them. The rest of the money has been invested and secured for my future family. I still work at my old job since I don't want to sit idle. Life is good so far and I'm hopeful I will meet someone who deserves me.